Early 60s Lincolns clearly represent an excellent era in both American design and just where we were headed as a country. The Lincoln was really the top of the line. They didn't make a lot of these cars, about 30,000 a year when they were cranking out, you know, 500,000 Mustangs in the mid 60s. I think it really has lived through time to the point where now you see this car and you think, gosh, are those modifications? No, those are actually just excellent design cues that have stood the test of time. I think the design was really bolstered by the adoption of it as the presidential limousine for JFK's time as president. There's kind of an edge to them now when you think about that. One of our most famous presidents ever was murdered in it. There's definitely some darkness behind this design. In 2014, my wife and I were looking at these old houses in the Tacoma area and on the west side, we found an old jalopy of a house. And when we closed, we walked in and there's a photo album with all these uh, historical photos from as early as the house was built. And the photo album had a couple photos of the cars that the, the doctor, Dr. Archer had owned. I saw in the carport two Lincoln Continentals. I think at that moment in time, the light bulb came on and said like, oh my gosh, this is, this is truly destiny. Ten days later, after some furious internet searching, I bought a 63 Continental. The car was really true. It needed everything to be restored, but it was in great shape. So we got the car back after about what seemed like forever, it ended up in Tacoma and rolled it into Griot's garage and started polishing on it as we normally do. At that point we realized, okay, this is gonna be a full restoration. We took the car back to Richard's garage and I had about eight employees of Griot's garage come over to help for some of the teardown work. And it was a lot of fun. We, we definitely wasted a lot of time, but at the same time, we were doing some fun stuff, right? We pulled the motor out in an afternoon. We started chemically stripping the paint off, which was terrible, terrible work. Pulled out all the interior and kind of preserved everything as if it was gonna go back on the car uh, with some light touching. After about nine months and tons of research, just as it relates to what components of the car can be modified, including the 430 V8 that's in there, which is a big block, it dawned on me that this was just way too much work. And I really started peeling back the onion and realized, gosh, I'm not gonna be able to do this alone. Nick brought the car into us originally with the idea of a very mild build, um, maybe a few tweaks on the stock motor, better ride height. I need you to help me finish this restoration. So I don't do classic restoration. I build hot rods. Like any other project, it snowballs. We end up with a 500 plus horsepower engine insane ride height on coilovers, not airbags, wheel tire that's never been done on one of these cars before. We modified the front bumper, opened up the center uh, to allow more airflow into the car, built a custom uh, chin spoiler on the bottom. It's functional, it gets a lot of attention, and really kind of changed the look of the car, it made it a lot more aggressive. Evod made some really uh, wild valve covers, 
I really feel that it's the centerpiece of the build is the engine bay. This car is a lot of fun to drive. Everything works, nothing rubs, great power. Definitely one of the best sounding cars we've built to date. Uh, there's just something about it.